Since the start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the UK, US and EU have coordinated a series of massive economic sanctions against key areas of the Russian economy in an attempt to force Putin to pull back his troops. But history has shown that the success of sanctions changing behaviour is by no means guaranteed. So will the sanctions on Russia work? Sanctions on Russia can be split into three broad categories. Financial, oil and gas and asset freezes on key individuals and companies. Starting with asset freezes, the UK, US and EU have targeted over 1,000 Russian individuals and companies, crippling their ability to access their assets in these jurisdictions. To give you an idea of the extent of the impact on these targets, over half a trillion pounds of assets have been frozen in the UK in response to these measures. As well as targeting assets held in bank accounts, these sanctions also target super yachts. Examples of the yachts impounded are the $700 million Scheherazade and the stunning $440 million sailing yacht A. Moving on to financial restrictions, the West are targeting the ability of key Russian companies including banks and energy firms to access the international money markets to raise funding. Also, Russian banks have been cut off from the international payment system called SWIFT. This severely impacts their ability to make international payments, causing them additional delays and costs with the hope of reducing revenue flow into Russia. Lastly, the West have introduced restrictions on the oil and gas sector, but this is a key area where the UK, US and EU have not been coordinated, severely limiting the impact of the restrictions. The US has banned all oil imports and the UK has just passed a law to phase them out by the end of 2022. But the EU has only gone so far as to block the import of oil transported by oil tankers by the end of 2022. The problem for the EU is that Northern Europe has a massive dependency on Russian energy through pipelines, which means that any additional restrictions are unlikely, at least until another energy source is realised. Germany has, however, stopped the construction of the Nord Stream 2, a 766-mile-long gas pipeline extended from Usluga in the far west of Russia to Griesvald in Germany. In the context of these restrictions, the key question is, are sanctions on Russia working? Yes and no. Sanctions are rarely a quick fix, and Russia's economy is by all objective measures still working. But over the long term, there's likely to be real economic damage as the restrictions continue to bite, heavily reducing Russia's ability to participate in international commerce. Forecasts suggest that Russia's economy will recede by 7-15% in 2022, with inflation continuing to spike. This effectively means that ordinary Russian people's living standards will drop, as wages are unlikely to keep pace with inflation and there could be mass unemployment. The West have also claimed that Russia's international debt default at the end of June shows that sanctions are severely impacting Russia's economy. Also, many Western companies such as McDonald's, Microsoft, KPMG and BP amongst a host of others have pulled out of Russia in response to the invasion. This denies the benefit that these companies bring to the Russian economy. But crucially, Russia knew exactly what the West were likely to do and it has prepared. Russia is now largely self-sufficient in food production a dramatic shift from the position prior to the annexation of Crimea in 2014, meaning it can feed its population without importing large amounts of food with foreign currency it no longer has access to. The debt default is likely not a response to a tanking of the Russian economy curtailing Russia's ability to pay, but instead a symptom of their lack of available foreign currency, which has been frozen in many Western banks. It has even placed the previous operations of Western companies under domestic management, limiting the impact of those companies pulling out of Russia. Most significantly of all though, Russia is able to sell vast quantities of oil and gas throughout northern Europe, India and China. Ironically, the war started by the Russians contributed to a massive spike in wholesale energy costs, meaning that Russia can make even more money from what it sells. Estimates suggest that Russia is making around 1 billion US dollars a day, which is propping up the Russian economy. Big unknown here is the impact on Russia's ability to wage war and public opinion in Russia. There could be a huge impact on the Russian economy and the living standards of the Russian people caused by the sanctions. But unless there is a massive shift in public opinion against the war, or a severe impact on Russia's war-fighting capability, there will not be much leverage on Putin to shift course. So what can the West do to further ratchet up pressure on Putin? Additional asset freezes are likely as more links to Putin are uncovered, with family members of oligarchs a particular target due to the ease in which assets can be transferred to negate the effects of asset freezes. The West have, however, hit the largest targets hard already, so additional asset freezes may be limited in their effectiveness. Energy is probably a key area which would really harm Russia if sanctions are tightened. The West will be walking on a tightrope though. The more damage done to oil supplies in the West, the higher prices will go. Already the West has seen an increase in oil prices, which has contributed to a sharp rise in inflation. 
Although there has been high levels of support for the Ukrainian people throughout the West, if there is continuing fall in living standards, some of this support may start to wane. With elections on the horizon, this may shift the political will to continue to support Ukraine economically and militarily. It can also not be forgotten that Northern Europe has a huge dependency on Russian energy, which has led to the EU refusing to bring in similar sanctions to the UK and US. It will be difficult to change the EU's mind on this unless other energy sources can be realised, which would take years and may not happen at all. With this context, can the West further target Russian energy? Potentially. Likely, the only effective way is the global implementation of price capping. This cap will be set at Russia's marginal cost of production, meaning that Russia is unable to heavily profit on the oil it sells. You may be thinking, why would Russia continue to produce when the Kremlin knows that a fall in production would increase harm on the West? The theory is that this would be incredibly costly for the Russian economy, causing thousands to lose their jobs and possible loss of crucial skills in the jobs market and permanent loss of strategic markets abroad. How can this price cap be enforced globally in the face of neutral or pro-Russian countries such as India and China? Through negative and positive incentives. On the negative side, the West would restrict all companies in their jurisdiction in participating in any way in the sale of Russian energy for a price which exceeds the price cap. The aim here would be to give Russia a decision to make. Either sell in accordance with the cap or lose access to Western insurance, shipping, infrastructure, ports and banking. Another option is secondary sanctions, or more simply, the targeting of countries and companies which violate the cap. This could be, for example, against the bank which provided funding for the purchase of oil by another company above the cap. This could be a highly antagonistic move, however, one which would lead to counter moves and a possible all-out financial and trade war, especially if China and India were targeted. This would not be good for anyone involved, especially at a time of economic pressure. On the positive incentive side, the cap would mean that India and China could buy energy at a heavily reduced rate. This may mean that they may be not outright support the cap, but at least tolerate it. There are many critics of price capping, however. On the surface, it does sound too good to be true, as the policy would seek to effectively force the Russians to continue to produce vast quantities of oil and gas to supply northern Europe, but at a heavily reduced rate so as to not benefit the Russian economy or Russia's warfighting capability. The bottom line is global compliance would be very difficult to achieve, meaning that Russia may have an outlet for market price energy, meaning they would not have to sell at the capped rate neutering the policy. At this point, no one knows how effective sanctions will be. They are undoubtedly causing economic pain on Russia, but if Russia's military can force the Ukrainians to the negotiating table to accept Russia's territorial and geopolitical demands in short order, then Russia will take the economic hit. The West's continued support of the Ukrainian military is therefore key. The longer they can hold the Russians off, the longer sanctions will bite, maybe forcing Putin to change course or even regime change. Thank you for watching How To History. Please like and subscribe for more.